Hi there, YouTube makers and home shop machinists. In this episode, I'm going to be making the tender truck columns for the Pennsylvania A3 switcher. Now, bad or poor machining of this part can lead to or contribute to a poor fit and finish with the truck bolsters. And of course, that may mean poor ride quality and in the worst case scenario, derailment which may damage the finished steam locomotive or cause personal injury. So we're going to approach this part of the build and attempt to make it with the highest degree of precision possible. As I was reviewing Kozo Hiroka's book, I noticed that the profile of this part shared an uncanny resemblance to the humble tea nut which of course is used with jigs and fixtures. And these make machine operations repeatable and predictable to produce precision parts. Even though some people may say that we are making a toy train, the reality is we are building a foundational knowledge of machining that can be utilized with other makes, projects, and builds. As always, I want to thank you for spending your time with me and I appreciate you watching one of my videos and I hope you'll stay to the end as I've got another great journeyman trick of the day I look forward to sharing with you. So come on over here and join me at the bench and let's make some chips. First thing I'm going to do is use my blue die cam. I'm going to lay out a couple of lines here for the roughed out size. And it, I think approximately the width of the brush should be enough uh, because both ends are in pretty good shape. I'm going to go ahead and do both ends. I'm going to set that aside. And for those of you who enjoy watching Blue Dacum Cure, this one's for you. But in the meantime, I'm going to take a look and set up my hermaphrodite caliber. And I'm going to use it to rough out and get approximately the thickness of the stock material which I should probably actually measure just to double check. It looks like it's going to be coming in at about 0 0.370, mid 370s, 380s and some other areas. Uh, but really it seems more consistent than the 370 in this surface. So I think it was 38s and it was probably originally sold as 38s material or 0.375. Now one thing I want to point out real quick I'm trying not to lay my calipers on this material, especially on this back bar, because I'm noticing that this uh, mill like is exceptionally hard. Hopefully you can see this, but I don't want it to rub in this area and wear it down and damage it. Because that means that when I close these caliper up nice and small this area, it may throw off the measurement and reading when that wears in. Additionally, I'm not going to be using my calipers for layout, even though it's pretty easy to set the required width of 0.375 and lock it down, it's going to damage it every time I do this. And what's happened is that these tips are going to get peened over and worn in, and it's going to th throw off the dimensions when I'm using the caliper. The first dimension I have to machine to is going to be 3 sixteenths or 0.1875. And I'm actually going to lay that out also on these ends right here. I'm not expecting to machine to that layout line. I want it so that when I load it up in my vise, I have a nice visual indicator of where that 3 sixteenths called for by Koza Hiroka is going to fall. So I can make sure that my cutter clears the vise and nothing's going to Im get impacted or damaged because my first cut, I'm going to take a nice skin cup off the top as many as I need to, to remove the original roughing cut and then bring it down to that dimension called by Kozo. Go ahead and lay out 3 sixteenths and we're going to zoom in here. Now I want you to pay attention to the tips here. You notice that the tip of hermaphrodite caliper lines up with the leading edge on the rule. And the scribe on the hermaphrodite is adjustable in length. And so when I do my layout lines, I'm going to make sure that the top edge on the hermaphrodite follows along with the top edge of this stock material I'm scribing. And as you can hear, this mill slag is 
tough stuff. I don't want to damage my calipers on it. And as you see, I've got both of them scribed in there. One well, of the first things I'm going to do is set up my zero. My plan is I'm going to use my edge finder and line up the quill on, or zero out the, the quill on my mill on the hard jaw of the vise. Then I'm going to double check just to make sure that everything's nice and trammed in. And as you see, it's holding well within a tenth. So I'm happy about that. If you weren't aware, this is another or previous journeyman trick of the day, which I'm using a mic'd out piece of paper. I like using post-it notes because they seem to be very consistent in their thickness. And I'm just going to bring down my mill head just until it just begins to grab or catch that. And so I know that's approximately three thousandths away from the top surface. I'm going to drop it down a whole ten thou, and then I'll make my first cut. Of course, I'll be applying copious amounts of cutting fluid because I want to preserve as much life on my cutters as possible. So since I already used the edge finder to zero out my quill, I'm just going to go ahead and bring the cutter over approximately half the thickness of the stock material, or half a 0.370. This titanium nitride 4 fluid is cutting very nice and smoothly. A good hand feel, I'm not feeling any vibration, the sound isn't squealing or squelching. The finish is decent, but it's not quite deep enough. As you can see that there's just a tiny bit of blue left and a few little marks from the original saw. I'll just drop that probably another five and go ahead and nip that off. Once my top edge is complete, I'm gonna go ahead and square up my ends. Again, this is another journeyman trick of the day I discuss where in a single operation or rather setup, I square off the top, then square off the ends, and I know as long as my mill is well trammed in, both sides will be nice and square to the top surface. Now I have already, after finishing up the top edge, zeroed out my z-axis so that I can go back to it, bring it down that last measurement to do the sides. If you weren't aware, I am taking a conventional cut. And definitely in this setup, I feel that conventional cutting is the way to go. Now I did decide here to cheat a little bit and swap back and forth between taking a smaller 5 thou climbing cut and then finishing it up with a conventional cut. I'll be taking my first cut on the side, that 0.1875 7, drop, and I've already run it over to check to make sure everything clears. Even though it was a tiny little 5,000 cuts, I was not happy with this climbing cut. And certainly, I feel that this machine with this setup prefers conventional cutting. It leaves a smoother finish, better feel in the hand, much less chatter, very little vibration, and it, the sounds that it makes, if you can hear it, is so much smoother.
so far, everything is coming along well. The only kind of gripe I had was kind of at the beginning, and I was discussing this with the Journey Machinist. What my issue was, after using the uh, Sureline tilting angle table and removing my vise and the tooling plate, I basically had to retram everything in again. Right now, it seems like every time I do something, I'm going to have to retram for a different setup. And one of the things that I was discussing with the uh, Journey Machinist was that it, I felt it was very inconsistent that my tooling plate sometimes would be off by 10,000, other times it would be off in 30,000, and never once was it off in the same direction or position. It just seemed really, really random. So we kind of discussed things and kind of broke down and discussed what I was doing. And that's where I learned another great journeyman trick of the day. And I applied it to this part of the make. What I'm going to do is either pull the tooling plate towards me or push it away from me and then tighten down after I've taken up the space between the tooling plate, T-nuts, and the T-slots on the mill table. I've tried to already pull in towards me and my tram went from being random and off anywhere from 10 to 20 thousandths to being off by about four to six thousandths, though not very consistently. And I found that so far in my test, pushing it away from me, I'm getting in within two to three thousandths of the tram and seems to be a little bit more consistent. Now, this might not be anything to do with the parts and how the parts interact with each other. It may really just have to do with the size of my hand and the strength of my hand affecting it. So to kind of get it to tram into one side, I'm going to go ahead and push it away from me. And as I push it away from me, I'm just going to snug up these bolts on the tooling plate a little bit and push it away, snug them up a little bit more, push it away, snug it up a little more, push it away to take up all that spacing. And as I've said, it seems to be a little more consistent pushing it away from me. Though the jury's still out on that one and I'm going to have to continue to run tests, continue to kind of break the, break it down, return it in and see where it ends up. And when I get to combine that and find that consistency. So let's say pushing away from me always shows that I I've only got a two to three thousand strand. Now I can use everything that I've shown you on making these tender columns as T-shaped planks and make custom dimensioned T-nuts. So what that means then, I'll be able to basically take up all the spacing with this journeyman trick of the day, utilize custom T-nuts, and essentially have it set up to where my tram might be less than a thou. So hopefully that's something that you'll find useful. And if you like today's journeyman trick of the day, be sure to hit that like button. I am happy with the way these columns are turning out. I'm really looking forward to finishing these up with you. Now, if you don't have Koza Hiroka's book, I highly recommend it. And if you were to follow the links in the description below, you'll be able to find and get your own copy. Thank you again for spending your time with me. I really enjoyed our time together as we made this component for our Pennsylvania A3 switcher project. Till next time, have fun out there Stay safe and keep making chips.